Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe's Neon checking in. Yes, the wait is over. Here's the video that all you guys have been looking for. Hey, listen, I, I really got to thank you guys for all the support on this series of um, rehanging these axes. The, 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 the comments and the support have just been fantastic. I've been loving it. Um, so here's the video where, where we are going to use the rawhide to make a collar um, for overstrikes on axes. Um, but before we get to that, um, I just want to thank all my new subscribers. I really appreciate you guys subscribing, checking in, leaving comments. That is super awesome, you know? And um, I really love it because I know you guys are watching the videos to the end, and that's, that's really great, you know? So, but listen, before we do anything, I want to thank my buddy Troy, um... 13 Prevail, go check him out, 13 Prevail Bushcraft, and he sent me this awesome embroidered shirt from Newfoundland, so all my brothers up in Canada, that you guys are watching my stuff, I love you guys, and y'all know who you are, no doubt about it, I got a, I got a Newfie flag back here too, from my buddy Rodney Newberry, but um, just a couple other quick shout outs. Uh, if you don't hear your name, don't let it bother you because I'm going to do a little bit more of this. So anyhow, but um, this video, um, and I want to thank Bill Kraus. He's been really diligent, you know, on watching the videos and he, he's really, Bill, I'm glad you're enjoying um, what's going on here and the whole process that we're going through with these axes. Um, thank you so much for your positive support and thank you so much for watching. Um, and then I want to say hi to my buddy in Berlin, Germany, Oliver Chiller Kale. Hey, bro. And then I want to say hi to Tab Ranch. Tab Ranch um, made a suggestion that I should do a shout out for my buddy JC, boss of the swamp. And so, JC, here's a shout out to you, buddy. Um, I'll be up to see you soon, my friend. Uh, and then, um, I want to say hi to my buddy Frank Pace. Frank, I'm glad you're enjoying this. I got your call the other night, and we'll be in touch real soon. Uh, hey, Mick. Mick Jeffries from the UK. What's going on over the puddle, buddy? Good to hear from you. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. I also want to say hi to um, Bullet DGW. Hey, my friend. Thank you so much for subbing and watching my stuff. It's nice to have you here. And... Um, I got to do a little shout out for my buddy P. Streach. Um, P. Streach. He noticed in one of my videos that a rivet, while I was showing one of my cruiser axes, the rivet actually popped out. It was this one right here. So thanks a lot, buddy. Um, it's funny. I was reading comments and I just happened to look right over my computer at my axe and sure enough, the rivet was gone, and it was on the floor. Good eye, my friend. All right, so let's get busy with this project here. All right? Let's talk a minute about overstrike. What is overstrike? This is only my opinion of overstrike, and it's a rather awesome opinion. I got that from Trump. Anyhow, um, overstrike is, more, I want to say primarily, it should be an issue in splitting, in splitting firewood, okay? Um, if you have overstrike in felling or in bucking, um, I'm not so sure you should be even using an axe, really. Overstrike and, and damaging the handle happens, unfortunately, when the wood splits in a weird manner, where it leaves a little bit of a tongue that sometimes you just can't prevent it. Um, uh, a neck guard, I don't know what, we, what, what the proper terminology is, or, or if there is one for it, but um, throat guard, neck guard... Um, Wrapping it in electrical tape, does it work? Absolutely. Absolutely. You just got to stay on top of it and change it when it needs changing. You know, but 
here's an example of overstrike. Okay. It's just, this axe is just chewed right out. This is a beautiful head and I will be putting a new handle on it. But that's dramatic overstrike. You know, and I guess just to go back a second, um, what I meant when I said that if you are overstriking, felling or bucking, that means you have some really serious aim issues if you're overstriking on your targets that way. Um, th that shouldn't happen. You, overstriking should be happening in your splitting process. So anyhow, let's take a quick look at, um, oh, as a matter of fact, before I go there, one of my subscribers, and I'm really sorry, my friend, I forgot who you are, but they were a little disappointed in me that I didn't show more of the removal of the original handles of the axes. And uh, I'm sorry for that, but again, I'll reiterate, um, Chris Killinger, he's got fantastic video about how to pull a wedge. You want to pull a wedge when the, when the handle is super dry, you know? And these are the tools I use. Cheap from Harbor Freight, okay? Little picks and stuff like this. And you get them in there and you just work that wedge right out. You'd be shocked. I, I was really surprised how easy I got the wedges out. So um, I'm sorry I didn't show that. Um, but anyhow, here we go. So here's... Um, Here's, here's some completed raw hide. This is raw hide. Okay. Neck guards. Throat guards. Axe guards. Whatever. Handle guards. Handle guard. That sounds pretty good to me. And this stuff is just incredible. This stuff is hard as steel. Look at the way that that dries. This, there's, it, you, you're not moving that. That's absolutely not going anywhere. So, um, I want to thank Skill Cult. Um, he did a fantastic video. It's the only one I've seen on doing these rawhide collars. And I'm going to show you guys right now how to make these. Okay? Here we go. Okay, folks, so check it out. Um, let's talk about where I get the rawhide from. Where I got the rawhide from is I went to Ocean State Job Lot, and I found this monster rawhide dog bone. And I just got a bucket, and I put warm water in it, and I soaked it and soaked it and soaked it. I think I soaked it for about four hours, and I was unable to untie the knot. Okay, it's easy. I know I should have had video of it, but that's what I did. And then what I did is I laid it out into sheets. I unrolled it. I completely unrolled the whole dog bone. And then I laid it out into sheets. And um, it was really super easy to do. So let me show you what it looks like. These are, these are the pieces you'll get. Pieces like this. You know? rawhide right and I was shocked how much rawhide was in one dog bone you know this, this stuff is incredible this the Native Americans were really brilliant using this stuff now this here this is lacing okay and I cut these when it in, when the um, when the rawhide was wet, okay? So I've got lacing already cut, um, but what I'm gonna show you is the pattern making process, and I'm gonna show you how I go about soaking the um, rawhide and fitting it on the handle and lacing it up. So let's talk about the ax that we're gonna be working on. And that's this beauty right here. It's beauty jersey. Okay, we're going to put a really nice wrap on this handle. Okay, see a nice shoulder like that is nice because that rawhide is going to shrink so tight. I'm telling you, it turns into steel. 
It's unbelievable that it will never move. The trick on this is I want to get a nice fit, if I can, of the shape here of um, on the blade. And what I might actually do is trim that as she's drying. So we'll see. But I'm really, really happy with the way this axe turned out. Now, guys, um, where's my tape? All right, I got to go get my tape. But, oh, it's right here. I got a little bit ahead of myself. And... I've got a little bit of an edge on this on this axe. So what I want to do before I even start working on it is I want to tape this off. I want to tape this edge off. Yeah. You don't want to unnecessarily cut yourself. It's just, it's really not worth it. You know, take the proper precautions, take your time, and do it right, you know. There we go there. Okay, so here we got, we got our axe all ready to go. The next thing that we're going to do here um, is we're going to make a pattern. We're going to pattern, make a pattern of this handle shape in order to get a nice, really nice, tight, tight wrap on it. So I'll be right back with you. All right, folks, so here we go. How's that angle? Pretty good right there? It's working for me. This is where we make the pattern, okay? Um, I gotta show you, this is really cool. Um, I got this from my buddy, Bob. His mom had this. And it holds my ball with string. And you just pull out as much as you need. Yeah, because we need a piece of string. Okay? I'm going to grab a piece of string right now. All right, we're making a pattern. Okay, this is simple. All right? Here's how I found to do it. Got to get my marker. Okay, I take a Sharpie marker like this. All right, maybe I'll get you guys a little bit closer. All right. And what I do is I go across the top here. And I hold the string right around the top of the head. Okay. And right in the center... I put a dot and then right in the center here I put a dot okay so I got these two dots on my string okay I leave those alone how long do I want to make this I think I want to come down I want to come down I think about this far That'd be nice. Okay. So now what we're going to do, because we're going to fold the paper over, we're going to move the axe over to the uh, right-hand side of the paper. Keep the handle fairly vertical here. And all we're going to do is we're just going to trace out the profile of the handle. Okay. Simple, right? Yep. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top. Whoop, let's mark the head. I want to mark the head. Actually, I should raise that camera because I keep bumping into it. All right. That looks pretty well aligned. Okay, let's mark the head. That's going to make it easier to, to align everything. Okay, so here we go. Now what we'll do is we'll lay this string where we measured right across here all right and that's going to be we're just going to want that to be just a little bit over 
okay so we we lined it up here on the front edge of the handle but we want it to be a little bit over okay so that the rawhide can go around the circumference now the rawhide when it's wet it's going to be stretchy okay so now what we have here and i'm going to go straight across here um and i'm not going to try and trace these cheeks because as the rawhide shrinks it's going to come away i'd like to catch the rawhide during the pro drying drying process and i'd like to cut that out and that's what i'll do all right so what we want to do now is decide what was that length again we're gonna go right about I like that let's go there with it now in this case we're just gonna draw a straight line across then we're gonna draw a straight line across here and it's it's not that important to be super super accurate okay now what I want to do is because there's shape on the front of the neck of this axe I want to generalize it for folding purposes okay I got a line there now what I'm gonna do now watch this is easy this is really easy uh, where's my rock knife mm. I'll use this exacto okay watch this is cake we're gonna come down here and we're going to cut the bottom of the shape of the, the, the guard. And then we're going to come down and we're going to cut this right to that line. Now we're going to cut right where you want it to meet the head. For now, because we're going to trim that. Now what we'll do, okay is we're gonna fold this right over on that line. You see that? Fold that right over on that line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pencil and we're just gonna go right, whoop, we're gonna go, yeah. That's really thin, but carefully go around the edge of what you folded over to duplicate the other side okay see we just duplicated what we just did now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut it this way you don't have to be super accurate Okay. All right, now, so here's what we got. We traced it out. We did the profile. We folded it in half. We traced out the other half. And now we have our collar. Okay. Which is going to go on just like this. Okay. See how that's starting to come along? Now what we're going to do is we are going to mark our holes. Now, when I mark the holes, I just draw myself a guideline in here. Kind of like that. That's a little too close to the edge, so I'll bring it in a little bit. You don't want to tear this this rawhide out, okay? Now, we got to think. This is the way I like to do this. As far as finding where to put the holes, I kind of go, okay, we're even on either side. Let's kind of start in the middle. That looks good. That looks good. All right, cool. And you probably want them about a half an inch apart, anyhow. Mark there, mark there. They're kind of close together. You could get a, get away with being a little further apart, but it's okay. You know, this is going to work out nice because I started in the middle. 
And then we'll throw a couple down here. Uh, yep. Now we'll make them a little tighter. Right there, right there. And we're going to add some right down here at the bottom. Couple. Okay, now let's go the other way. Let's see where we end up. We got one right over the top of the knuckle, which is fine. And then we'll go here. Oh, we want a big, strong one right here. And, um, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to round this. Okay. Round that right out. And we do that on the bottom down here, too. Okay. Puts a nice finish on it. All right, so now what do we do from here? Check this out. I got it. I'm not prepared. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay. We take some clear tacky spray, right? And I take a piece of 30-pack uh, beer container. Right? I spray it up like that. And I let it sit for a minute. Kind of let it dry for a bit. And then I go ahead and I take it. And I stick it right down. Okay, now, you know, you, you can let it dry longer, whatever. Oh, here's my rock knife. Okay, here we go. All right, now what we're doing is we're just tracing, we're just cutting right around the pattern that I just made. Are you following me here? I hope you are. <laughs> All right. I love doing this stuff. This is fun. Okay. Bam. Oh, this cut didn't come out too good right here. Okay, so there we go. Now, the reason I did that, the reason I, I, I put it on that cardboard is so that we got a nice firm pattern to accurately trace around. I mean, that's, that's the reason. Okay, I'm going to get my hole punch set out. And we're going to go ahead and punch the, the holes so we got them marked for the pattern. Okay, I've never done this before. Really, Joe? Okay. I put in the biggest, um, the biggest size to do these. Okay, now, uh, excuse me, just got to grab a mallet. Whoop, I got one right here. Beautiful. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and right where we marked. And I can make a little bit of adjustment at this point in time. See what we got here? Makes sense? Are you following me? I know you are. Because you guys are freaking brilliant. I love it. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to transfer this 
onto this rawhide. Okay? Then we're going to soak it. And, um, yeah, things are going to happen quick. It's a lot of fun. So stick with me here. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I, I like to use a fine tip um, Sharpie. And, um, kind of find a... You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is actually a really nice piece right here. I'm going to go ahead and use it. The stuff, I didn't, I didn't mention how cheap this was. This bone. Now, I've already done the two sheaths that you've, there are the guards, whatever, that you've already seen. And, um... I've, you see, you see how much I've got left over, and it was three dollars. So what I'll do now is I'll just trace the shape of the guard, and I'll mark the holes. Okay, this is why it's nice to be on that light cardboard, that beer. Um, Beer container is just great, okay? I don't know. I'm probably blocking your view, but again, I'm just going around the outside, and I'll go ahead and mark the holes. All right, let's see what we got, right? All right. There you go. Now, what I'll do is I'll very carefully, and, and, and please be very careful, or you will really hurt yourself doing this. Cut this out. Like I said, be very careful because you're going to be applying quite a bit of pressure. Really? Okay. Let's see how we did. See, we still got to go around it again. It's really... Um, Sometimes you got to come right along. Oop. There we go. It's a little thicker here, so it's kind of giving me a hard time. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes, too. Get this all taken care of here. All right. Okay, we're back here. Again, our pattern. Here's our rawhide. And we've got some nice warm water here. Now what we're gonna do, is I'm gonna find some, a nice nest of this rawhide here. I'm probably gonna have to use two pieces, but that's okay find the longest ones I got and the thickest ones I've got so this looks pretty good that goes in the water and um, this looks good so that goes in the water okay and we'll put this in the water here just like this 
and we will let that soak for about I don't know I would it's hard to say I'd say it's probably gonna be soft in about an hour and a half and um, that's when we'll come back and uh, yeah we'll lace her up all right folks we're back it's been um, I'd have to say it's been about uh, almost two hours yeah two hours Let's see how our rawhide's doing. Oh, yeah. You can see how pliable it's getting. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting nice. Let's check the lacing. Yeah, the lacing's getting really nice. Very nice. See how this will get? still a little bit firm yet so we probably got about another hour at least to go um, but listen folks I was thinking about my last segment and um, you know when I was cutting that rawhide I was really exerting a lot of pressure you know on that sheetrock knife and I was really trying to pay attention to where my fingers were and you know to be honest with you I'm not so sure that that was um, the best way to cut it. I think this way might be better. Let me just grab a scrap here. And, um, right. How oh, well prepared am I? <laughs> My tin snips. See that? That's a really good way to cut it. Yeah. When I was cutting that with the sheetrock knife, I was really exerting a lot of dangerous effort, if you know what I mean, on that knife and that knife blade in order to cut that stuff. Because this stuff, once it's dry, you know, it's like... As hard as a rock, you know. So anyhow, we're gonna let this soak a little bit longer. I would definitely say for another hour or so. Um, what I would also like to share with you guys is it, when you get to this point where your um, your rawhide is getting soft like this, what you can also do is use this opportunity. You see where the pen marks are on the rawhide? You can actually see the marks from the pen. You, at this time, you can just take your finger and go like this. And the marks are gone. I don't like pen marks. See that? They're gone. I'll just go around and finish up these other ones. Let this soak a little bit longer, and um, we'll be back to stitch it up. All right, folks. I'll be back with you in a little bit. Well, folks, now it's been about three hours. I'd say about three and a half hours. We've got our rawhide in this state of mind. See this? It's nice and loose, but I, I, I want to take this time to is, express the fact that you don't want to get this too wet because if you really let this go and you get this too wet, what you're going to do is you're going to break down the fibers. And when you break down the fibers, um, you're actually going to start to turn it into glue. So right now it's nice and pliable and the lacing is perfect. It's the way you want it. You want it strong. You don't want it too stretchy where it becomes fibrous. That's that's a uh, that's a bad thing. So, um, with that being said, let's get to putting this on here, okay, folks? <clears throat> this isn't rocket science, and don't make it rocket science, okay? 
what I like to do is I like to take the, the, the rawhide out and I like to just tamp it dry so it's not that it's not wet and slick. You know, I just kind of dry it out like that. And I take my leather strip and I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of run it through there. And then I like to take and um, I like to put a little bit of a point. Oh. See, that's that's not going to work as good as it would if I were using my snips. All right. And then we got some nice um, points so that we can do our stitching. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top and we're going to work down. Okay. See how this is looking here where we're at. We're going to stop. We're going to start up here at the top and we're going to finish down here at the bottom. Okay. See how this is just about together like this here. This is going to be just gorgeous. Okay. It's all about the pattern guys. You know, use the little string trick that I showed you to measure. And if you're not sure, measure the bottom too. You know, I only measured the top and then I added what the string told me to add. But you can see at this point in time how perfect it's working out, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's get to stitching. What we do is... Um, Actually, we go over the top on the first stitch, okay, which is kind of weird. So this one goes over the top and let me move this out of the way. This one here, and we keep we keep our um, we keep our lace flat, okay. This one here will go over the top, okay. Just stay with me here, okay? I gotta kind of equal things out, but when when whoop, when you bring it together, when you you bring the uh, rawhide together, watch, watch, okay? Look, you see? Do you see? Do you not see? Okay, I've got I've got the rawhide right up to the bottom of the the head of the axe. I've got it over the cheeks, and I'll trim that afterwards. Okay, but look how we got it now. Here, this is a guys. If you're gonna do this, do it once and make sure that every move you make is perfectly lined up. Because if it's not, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it in the long run, okay? So now we're going to go back over. So this one is actually going to come over through here and down through. Keeping your lacing flat. Okay, this one's going to come over. And down through can happen and you need to be really careful because the lacing be it can become rather fragile you know and you don't you really don't need to go nuts when you're tightening it you really don't because when it shrinks it's amazing how tight it gets Okay, I'm just drawing this together. Everybody's good so far. And we just keep stitching from the inside out. Stitching from the inside out. Okay. Okay, you can see how we're coming along here, right? 
and I keep making sure that it's in the position that you want it in because I'm telling you folks when this thing dries forget it it's done She's coming together really nice. Now you can see how much it stretches um, from the pattern that we made, right? Um, but when this stuff dries, I'll tell you what, people. Absolutely forget it. Thank you all so much for being so interested into this project. I was blown away at the first one I did. I just couldn't believe it, how it turned out. Okay. You see how that comes together so nicely? I get a full, you guys won't believe it. When you see this dry, wow. Outside to inside. Keep it flat. And outside to inside. All right. Okay, folks, look. See how that's stitched? Okay, let's tie a knot. What I prefer to do is tie a square knot. Don't try and cinch it tight. If you break your laces here, it's a bummer. Oh. So you got an easy overhand knot there. One more. And leave it. Center everything up. Not too tight. And leave it. Alright. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an X-Acto knife. And I am going to... Um, give this about, oh, I would say, I'm going to give it about, mm, I'd say, I don't know, a half an hour to an hour. And then I'm going to trim. Make sure you got that rawhide where you want it. And then I'm going to trim right around, um, right around the cheeks here and bring those right out nice. That's how you do it. Okay, folks. What we're going to do now is we're going to cut this. We're going to trim this out for the cheek on this jersey head. It's going to be awesome. Greg Brown, what do you think, buddy? How you doing? Terry Milburn, tell Melanie that we said hello. We love you guys big time. Hey? Look, look. While this rawhide... While this rawhide is still a little bit damp, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark the edge. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my X-Acto and I'm going to slide it in there really high. And I'm going to keep it. Right up high on that head. Okay, folks. See what we got here? Are you seeing this? This is beauty. This is... This, look at this. a little rough right there. I think I could clean that up if I really wanted to. 
I don't know why. I'm going to have guys yelling at me because I'm too pretty about axes. You like them shiny. You like this. You like, well, yeah, I kind of do. <clears throat> so what we do now is we can work that leather right up. <clears throat> See me pushing that rawhide right up. <sighs> See that? You see that? Huh? She's already firming up. I got to get this other side done pretty darn quick here, folks. So here we go. Look at that. Do you see? Now we got a little bit of a gap here, right? Watch this. You just push that. Look at that. That's, that's almost flush right there with the head. You see that? You see that, huh? When this thing is dry tomorrow morning... Huh, I'm going to tell you what. That's what you're talking about. Right there. That's like rock. It's like steel. All right. So anyhow, folks. That's going to be it for this evening. We've got her all wrapped up, and we're just going to let her dry. And uh, I'll check in with you in the morning, and we'll take it from there, and we'll have a finished product. And then you guys will know how to take and wrap your uh, wrap the neck of your axe in some rawhide. Just you a little bit here, folks. So as you can see, we're starting to tighten up. The rawhide's starting to shrink. See how tight the stitching is getting? The holes are starting to elongate, you can tell. And I just keep tightening the, the finishing knot. I just keep giving that just a a little bit of snugging. Yeah, but she's starting to dry up. So, we're all set for the night. And, um, we'll check back in with you in the morning. folks we're back it's the following day and um, our our guard our protector whatever we're gonna call it has is dried um, it's actually um, about six o'clock in the evening so it's had quite a bit of time to dry overnight wasn't enough um, after about eight hours nine hours it was still a little bit not soft but it was still drying you know, so now we've got it good and dry, and um, let me show you here what it looks like. All right. Now, you can remember that when when I cut these the cheeks right here, I cut those right against the steel. That that rawhide was right tight against that steel of the head. 
and you can see how much it shrank. Now, if I stayed down here all night overnight with it, I could keep pushing it up, but it's absolutely unnecessary whatsoever. I mean, that much exposed wood of the handle isn't going to matter nothing, not at all. The most important part we've got covered here, okay? But it's amazing how much it shrinks and how tight that is. That It's like iron, you know? So we're going to go ahead and trim this up. And um, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, put a coat of boiled linseed oil. Cut 50-50 with um, uh, mineral spirits. I like to do that uh, for when I oil things for the first time with boiled linseed oil. I like to cut it with mineral spirits um, at 50%, half and half. And it just helps for the pen penetration value. It helps it penetrate a lot better. So hang on one second. Let me grab that. Okay, I got that right here. And I'm just going to have big hopes that I can get this lid off. Oh, yes, very nice. I'm going to grab a couple gloves. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to trim this. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and snip them right off. Okay. Now with this boiled linseed oil, um, Yeah, no, I don't mess around. I don't, I don't let this stuff go into my skin. It's not good. <laughs> it's really not good. I know there's a lot of guys out there that just go ahead and wax up their oil up their axe handles, boiled linseed oil, no problem, dripping in the stuff. Nah, I'm good. I'll wear a pair of gloves. Cheers to you folks. So, okay. Here we go. I kind of like to let my um, my rag absorb some of that beautiful linseed oil. Eh? Okay, now here we go. I'm gonna turn you turn you guys down a little bit here so you can see this. All right. Look at that. See how that changes the color? Look at that, huh? This will go this will go right into that rawhide. And it will make this rawhide so hard. It's it's just it's 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 scary to think about it, really. I love it. Yeah. And it's just gonna keep drinking it. So we're gonna give it a good good solid bath of it. And we're actually gonna end up doing a whole handle. Cause you know it needs it. You know it needs it. So there you have it, folks. That's the rawhide wrapped axe collar. <laughs> guard, axe guard. And that's not going anywhere. You, you can't move that. There's you, you cannot move that. That's so tight on there. It's just unbelievable. All right, folks. So anyhow, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. This I, I know this is going to come out to be kind of a long video, but I wanted to do it in depth so that y you guys got a good grip on, you know, how this is done. It's it's not uh, it's not hard to do at all, but I'm really impressed with 
the 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 way it works and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and get up some rounds and and do some splitting and hopefully get some accidental overstrikes so that you can see that it actually works and i also want to mention that um the next video that i'm going to be doing is going to be the final video on these axes and that is going to be making a sheath i've also got a lot of folks that are you know, asking to do a full-length video on um, how I make my sheaths. Though I've already done that, um, I'm going to do it again. So, yeah. Um, and I also want to thank my buddy Scott Wallace. Yep, that's right. The old man for the t-shirts. Anyhow, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm making this really nice overstrike protective collar for your axe. And um, if you make one, I'm going to tell you something, you'll be glad you did.